In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a bunch of different energy concepts, mainly the conservation of energy to solve two problems. One where a mass is compressed uh, against a spring and shot up on top of a platform. And we're going to find the final velocity. And then the second one we're going to solve for is a block that's sliding down a ramp and then onto a flat surface, experiencing friction and then solve for the distance it slides on that horizontal surface. So let's go ahead and focus on our first one. Um, based on the conservation of energy, if we add up all the initial energies, that will also equal all of the final energies. So although the object is going to be doing different things or maybe moving at different velocities in the end, if you sum up all the different types of energies in the beginning and the end, they're going to be equivalent to one another. Um, now, in this one, it says frictionless, so we're not going to have any work done, so no energy added or subtracted from the system. So with that being said, you want to take a look at the initial position and see what types of energy are present. So it's not off the ground, it's at rest, and it's just compressing a spring. So we just have elastic potential energy, which could be PE sub E or U sub E. And then in the end, once it's moving up over here, it's not compressing or stretching a spring. So no more elastic, but we do have gravitational potential energy and it's moving. So we definitely have some kinetic energy as well. So what we want to do from there is we want to break these three types of energy into their full form of what their formula is, plug in our numbers and see if we have enough information to solve for that final velocity. So I went ahead and plugged in our numbers. We have the potential energy formula, the elastic potential energy formula, which is one half kx squared. The x being the amount of compression, compression or stretch from the equilibrium position um, equal to mgh. Mass of the block is two kilograms times our g 9.8 and our height of one meter at the end plus one half mv squared. So it did look like our v was our only unknown. So we can just algebraically solve for the v. So the product of these was 22.5, and then I subtracted the product of these, which was 19.6. And then the remaining amount of energy is equal to the one half mv squared over here. One half times two is just one. So the coefficient of one doesn't really matter. And then we square rooted both sides to end up with the final velocity of 1.7 meters per second. Now for our second problem, it's actually gonna get a lot more complex because we have the force of friction. Um, we have a coefficient of kinetic friction of 0.2 throughout the entirety of the problem, which basically means that we have some initial energy and some final energy. But if we have some friction acting on it, then we are basically pulling energy out of the system, uh, the system basically just being the, the earth and then the block. And then that would mean that there's some heat being transferred to the ground from friction. So the block itself is going to lose some energy. So same principle, except um, this one has some work done, which is basically just force times distance times the cosine of theta when we're figuring out our work. So for this one, if we take a look at the block at its initial um, position there, um, it only has gravitational potential energy there, but it's not moving and not compressing or stretching anything. And then we're going to go ahead and look at it at this spot, this spot, and then this spot over here. So when it slides to position two, it is going to have some energy taken away from it from friction. And then at the very bottom, it's going to have some kinetic energy, but its potential energy now is all gone because it has lost all of its height. So let's go ahead and plug in some of those number values. But before we do, um, in order to find work, 
work equals the force times the distance and the force is the force of friction, which is the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force. So we do already have the coefficient of kinetic friction. So we want to make sure we find the normal force. And the way we're going to do that is draw out some forces. So we have force of gravity here. And then we have the y component and x component for our force of gravity. So because I've done a bunch of these problems, I know that the FGY is equal and opposite of the normal force. So I can go ahead and find the normal force that way. Um, we know that mg is 1 times 9.8. So it's basically 9.8 newtons. And then if we want to find the FGY, then we're going to have to use the cosine of theta because we want the adjacent side of our triangle. So our normal force is going to be 9.8 newtons times the cosine of 30 degrees because this 30 degree angle translates into that triangle right over there. <clears throat> now we're also going to have to use that 30 degree angle one more time to find the height of that block because the height of this block is this vertical distance from the bottom of the incline to the very top. So we know that it slides down a diagonal distance of two meters. That's the hypotenuse of our triangle. So if we redraw another triangle where the hypotenuse is two and this is 30 degrees, um, this is going to be a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So I know that this side is going to be one. So our height off the ground is going to be one. So now let's go ahead and set up all these numbers and see what we find out as far as how much kinetic energy there is at the bottom of the ramp. All right, so we have our MGH from the gravitational potential energy. Our work was the force of friction, mu times normal force. The mu is 0.2. The normal force is 8.49. Once I took the 9.8 times the cosine of 30, and then multiplied by the distance, it slid down the ramp, which is that 2-meter diagonal distance. When I subtracted the two, I got 6.4 joules, and we have 6.4 joules of kinetic energy. So when we go from position 2 to 3, we have kinetic energy, and then we have some work taken out of the system from friction once again. And then at the very end, we have nothing because um, the object is at rest. So if we add work to both sides, then we're basically saying that kinetic energy equals the work. Now, again, work is going to be mu sub k times the normal force times the distance. So we have the kinetic energy of 6.4 joules. The coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.2, but the normal force has changed because now the object is sitting on a flat surface. So it's just going to have the mg straight down, 9.8 newtons, and it's going to have a normal force of 9.8 newtons upwards. So now the normal force has increased to 9.8 newtons, so there's actually a little bit more friction there. And then we want to figure out how far it's going to slide. So if we go ahead and multiply these two, we get 1.96 and then divide both sides by 1.96 to get our final distance. And then our distance comes out to be 3.27 meters. And that is our final answer. So if you're working out a problem like this, um, definitely treat it as a multi-step problem where you go from position one to two to three, a bunch of different ideas there using the conservation of energy and also including work. Um, but then also the tricky part being that your normal force changes from um, the first segment of the problem to the second segment. So you wanna make sure you change that normal force as well. So I hope that was helpful in helping you solve two different energy problems. Thank you for watching and listening.